our good shepherd, the one who leads us always to new life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Hallelujah, Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the fourth Sunday of Easter, which we call the Good Shepherd Sunday. Remembering that Easter is not just a day, but a whole season where we celebrate new life, renewed hearts, and hearts touched by grace and mercy. We call upon the Lord now to share that mercy with us as we humble ourselves, asking forgiveness of our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us proclaim our glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty God, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, if you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. We offer this prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, look, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, what are we to do, my brothers? Peter, Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those who are all, whomever the Lord our God will call, he testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed, for you have gone astray like sheep. But you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gates, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gates is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, Amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved, and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. I came so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. We thank our loving Savior 
our healer, our confidant, the one who leads us, in offering us the opportunity to always have more abundant life within and among us and for us. This fourth Sunday of Easter certainly is called Good Shepherd Sunday, not just for the readings, but because we acknowledge the one who taught, instructed, healed, and loved before, during his passion, and after in the resurrection. What a loving Savior we have. And he has taken so many from darkness and doubt into the light of that new life. Even St. Peter, who so often was confused and, yes, denied our Lord at his time of great passion and death, is now witnessing without fear, without trials, to say, we have in Jesus a loving shepherd. Somehow he was brave enough and strong enough to bring many to the faith, even as he himself would die a martyr, giving his life as our Lord Jesus gave his. And then St. Peter in his writings reminds us, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is the grace of God. As so many suffer during this time of the pandemic of COVID-19, as so many wonder where God is in all of this, we who believe know that God is alive and well in our hearts and our lives. Maybe there are many things we lift up in prayer that say, this is what we really want, Lord. Heal my loved one. End this pandemic. Help us now to get through. And yet indeed, when we look at the shepherd, there's nothing we need other than our own reliance on Jesus and his ability to take us from this situation into new life. St. John was wonderful in giving Jesus titles and Jesus proclaiming them himself. I am the gate. I am the shepherd. I'm the vine. I am the resurrection. And John would back those titles with these amazing teachings that Jesus brought to us. Do we hear the shepherd's voice? Are we somehow distracted by the voices of so many others, especially during this time of the COVID crisis? But Jesus' words are always true for the last 2,000 years and will be for all eternity. For we also heard Jesus say, I am the light, the truth, and the way. We need to follow him as much as ever. Sheep oftentimes get distracted, but Jesus was faithful to the will of God. Sheep might be drawn to something that are more pleasant, situations that are more pleasant, things that they think they need more immediately than a faith that restores us. But we can always return to a merciful God a loving shepherd, our Lord Jesus. It's one of my favorite lines in Scripture from this Gospel of John. I came so that you might live and have life and have it more abundantly. And that abundant life is still ours. Sorrow, illness, frustration, disbelief will only weaken our faith, but does not weaken the gifts and the grace of God. So we look to the one who heals. We look to the one who has resurrected and fulfilled God's will. New life, new insight, and hopefully renewed love and faith. I love this particular song called We Remember because it says so much about where we are in these days, but more importantly, about who Jesus is, as shepherd, as the true gate, as the direction we all hope and try our best to follow, into new life and away from sin and distress and doubt. 
We remember how you loved us to your death. And still we celebrate, for you are with us here. And we believe that we will see you when you come in your glory, Lord. We remember, we celebrate, we believe. Here, a million wounded souls are yearning just to touch you and be healed. Gather all your people, hold them to your heart. We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate, for you are with us here, and we believe that we will see you when you come in your glory, Lord, we remember we celebrate, we believe. Thank you, Good Shepherd. Thank you for calling us by name. Thank you for the new life you promised us. Amen. We now offer with sincere hearts, our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have it for him. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We offer prayers for God's holy people, for the church, for all people throughout the world. In thanksgiving, we come before God in praise for Jesus, who perfectly fulfilled God's will and brought us to new life through the resurrection. In thanksgiving, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for all your people in the world today, that we might have the means, the patience, the skill to deal with this pandemic. We pray for those who have died from it, those still struggling with this virus. We pray for their families, their loved ones. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that all people live their lives this day for the good of all, to practice good and helpful distance and response, and Lord, may we all work together at this time 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those isolated, Lord, whether homebound or have no one to reach out to assist, may our hearts stir to look for them, to seek them out as you would, and to offer them service and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your church throughout the world, that the faithful remain constant in faith, constant in prayer, and know that you will give us what we need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that are written in our book of intentions that we place at the altar, that we may know the answer to these prayers in our daily living, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we do remember how you have loved us, how you have saved us in your passion and death, and how you continue to call us to holiness. Help us to grow in faith, in compassion, and certainly in charity. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer fruit of the body, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray now, my brothers, my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands, to the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us, in Jesus our shepherd. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers and angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Amen. 
we have created right and gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy, this living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs with saints Teresa and Bridget and to all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you 
have summoned before you. And your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Root him with the man in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And Amen. with your spirit.
offer now a spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I am not able at this moment to receive you sacramentally, I ask that you spiritually enter into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We are grateful for the opportunity to gather here in prayer. Although we are sad, the extended community cannot be with us. But we keep each other in prayer, remembering that the Lord, our Shepherd, will continue to lead us through this. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, keep you, strengthen you, and give you wisdom, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended, go in peace, hallelujah.